Hi, it's Heather Clayton Staker. This video is to help you set up your children's phones and your teenagers' phones for the summertime. When they have more time on their hands, they might find themselves wanting to use their phones more than ever. And so some suggestions and tips for how to set up those phones for success over the summer. This video goes along with the Ready to Blend podcast episode six, which is called Summer Phone Wraps. And wraps stands for relationships, awareness, protections, and then sustainability. And those are the four the concepts that I discuss in that podcast related to setting up your phone for your teens for summer success. This has been a big issue for our family because our two oldest just teenagers just left for a summer of a week, about a month of going to camp and spending a few weeks with their grandparents. They'll hit Jackson Hole and then drive down to California and go to the beach and we'll meet them down there. And so in preparation for that, we had to think through do I just send them with their phones with absolutely no protection or do we put in some guardrails to help them out? And so this is a video to show you the guardrails that we decided to put in place. And this goes along with the P in wraps for protection. So join me as I show you my phone and here's how I set it up. Okay, so this is my iPhone 10, and I just go into settings right here. And then in settings, there are a variety of options. And if you scroll down here about to the bottom of what I see on my screen, you can see screen time and that's the money app. That's really the settings place where you're going to want to spend your time. So go into screen time and then there are a variety of options here. The first time is the first one is downtime and for downtime, you can just set, you can set how, what, at what point all of the apps shut off. And so this one I really like for the school year because for our family, we like to just around eight o'clock, maybe 8.30, just shut down all the apps. Right now we've been using a device cabinet instead, so we haven't needed this, but it's nice to know that it's there. So that at some point you just wanna call it a day and shut down the apps, you can use this downtime setting. I didn't do it with my teenagers who are traveling because they're gonna be on road trips, they're gonna be doing some late night traveling, and I wanted them to have access to this phone. I also wanted them to have it for emergencies. and so I I didn't do downtime, but what I did do is I went into app limits and I said, add app, add a limit. And I just checked all apps and categories. And then I'll tell you in a second how to customize that, but just select all apps and categories and then go to next. And then what we said for these teenagers was one hour. So we said, okay, you can have an hour a day of having access to your apps, check in with your friends. Don't feel like you've completely fallen off the face of the earth, but one hour a day ought to do it. And then customizing days, we also went said, look, on Friday, if you want to watch a movie or something, let's make it three hours. So Friday, you get some extra time to mess around on your phone. So that's how we added some app limits. Um, and so then you click add. Now, the next thing to do is to go in here to always allowed. And I really like this because you can customize if there are apps that you don't want to have be subject to that app limit, then you can designate that here. So up at the top are the apps that are always allowed, even once they've surpassed like an hour a day or whatever limit you just set. And then down here are all of your other apps. So for, for my teens, we deleted FaceTime from always allowed because I found that I actually have found them late at night, like in the middle of the night, FaceTiming friends and those behaviors that cause them to not get any sleep. That is what contributes so much to emotional and mental decline. And so those are the things where we want to have some guardrails just to protect them. And then I also, but for always allowed, I added some. So like Audible down here where they can listen to their audiobooks, that's a great one for when they're road tripping. That's something I wanted to allow them to always have access to. Didn't feel like they needed to, I needed to control their listening to great books. And then you can just go through and choose any others where you feel like. So I put calculator up there, I put music. I put tools, so like Gmail, so they could access their email from the road. Those kind of apps are helpful to always allow, but the ones that I kept within limits were the social media, anything that's really gonna distract from their travel experience and keep them staring at their phone instead of engaging with the real world. And so that's how you go, that's how you use that always allowed setting. And that's a really great place to have a discussion with them and just think about all of these are, are part of the the relationship and awareness part 
and thinking through how, how to make this so that the phone becomes a tool rather than a distraction and something that brings you down. And then finally, this last one, content and privacy restrictions. This one's really great. So make sure you turn that on. If it looks like that, it's off. If it go like that, it's on. And then the first one, iTunes and App Store purchases. This is important. What we do is we discuss ahead of time which apps to have on the phone. And so they choose their apps and just every so often they'll just say, hey, I want to add these apps and that's great. But then we, we actually don't allow them to just install apps without some discussion. And so it's a, it was especially important on this trip because my son discovered that if he uninstalls an app and then reinstalls it, it resets that screen time limit. And so if, for example, he wanted to do Facebook for more than an hour, he could just uninstall Facebook, reinstall Facebook, and that would reset the clock, even if he'd already used it for an hour. He's really good at hacking into things. And so that's lucky for you because I can tell you some of the things he's discovered. <laughs> so we just said, we just helped them figure out all the apps they wanted for this trip that were appropriate and then just said, hey, let's not download any more for the time being. And then we then looked at content rest So allowed apps, you can also set like specific apps that are allowed and I, I don't really manage that for them because we've already done that. Content restrictions though, this is important. So you can go through and have your iPhone help filter out a bunch of stuff ahead of time. So for example, music podcasts and news, you might want to set that to clean instead of explicit. Music profiles and posts, those are on. My, my kids can see the music profiles. Movies. So what are your standards for movies? For us, we're like, hey, PG-13, that ought to do it. You don't really need to be watching rated R movies and NC-17 movies while you're out and about. TV shows, we set those to, let's just keep those within like the PG, rate, the PG rating range. Books, we set those to clean. And then apps, we said, look, ages 12 and up, that's the range you fall into. Let's just trust that that's roughly where you want to be. That doesn't mean that I don't still discuss it with them and look at it with them, but it just kind of gets us in the ballpark. And then web content. So limit adult sites, probably a good idea. And then for Siri, search web content. We do allow them to use Siri to search and then explicit language. Uh, we don't really want them. That's not something they really need. And then multiplayer games. Again, this is one where you got to think about it because they can connect with strangers and form weird relationships. So um, in our family, we just kind of discourage the multiplayer games. So anyway, those are the ways that we set the settings. Then you can go back. You, you can actually, down here, you can add family members and then manage their devices from your phone. But if you find that to be a step beyond where you want to go and more complicated than you want it to be, just grab their phone and you can just follow the process I just did right there on their phone and that'll set all their limits on their phone and you should be good to go. I hope that showing you my phone and the way that we set it up at least gets you thinking about the protections that you want, might want to put in place for your teenagers and your children as you approach these summer months. A few really important precautions, and these are critical. First, when you first set your screen time limits, you'll be asked to enter a screen time passcode as the parent. And if you forget that pass passcode, your child will actually have to restore their iPhone in order to create in order to unlock their screen time limits. So don't forget the screen time passcode. It would be really a bad thing for your kids. So write it down somewhere secret and have that screen time passcode available in case you want to change those screen time settings, which you will, and you'll need to have that passcode. And probably you'll be the only one in your family who knows it, so write it down. The alternative to that is you can set up all of those screen time limits using family sharing, which I kind of mentioned when I showed you my phone just now, but I didn't really get into it. The advantage of doing it through family sharing is first of all, you can set the limits for all of your children just through your phone. And then also if you forget your screen time passcode, you can just reset it on your own phone instead of having to restore their phones. So if you want, if you are comfortable getting into the family sharing idea, then that's an, a convenient possibility. Also, I wanted to tell you that if you're an Android, you have an Android phone, maybe you have a Samsung or something or a Chromebook, you can also set daily limits. So go, what you'll do is you'll want to search for the Family Link app 
to get started. And I also recommend for either iPhones or Android phones, there's a great app called Screen Time, which you can search for, and it's an alternative from anything I just showed you. This is another great way to manage devices. Hope that helps. I'm Heather Clayton Staker. Thanks for joining me today.